Hi friends, welcome or welcome back to my channel. And today's video is something that I hope to be doing pretty regularly on my channel. And that's talking about all of the things that I have read and watched recently. This might evolve into a favorites video where I just talk about the red, my favorite reads and my favorite watches. But for now, we're gonna talk about everything that I have read and watched recently. This is really just for June, so at the beginning of June to now. And then we'll talk about what I'm planning on watching and reading. So first, let's talk about the things that I watched recently, and we'll take it from the most recent thing and work backwards. So first, we have the most recent movie that I watched in June. My partner and I actually went and watched this last weekend, and I was very, very, very excited to see it and it massively let me down and that is The Strangers Chapter 1. So for some reference, I love The Strangers. It's one of my favorite horror movies of all time. When I first watched it in my early teens, I was terrified of it. I have watched it many, many times since then and it still scares the crap out of me. And so I was very excited for this one. To be honest, I didn't know that it was coming out, but when I was planning our date night, I saw that it was in theaters and I jumped on the chance to see it. The Strangers is basically a franchise at this point about couples going and staying in remote places and then getting hunted and killed by three people in a mask, a man and two women. They never really talk or identify themselves. We don't really know much about them. And in this one, it is the first movie in a trilogy and it follows a couple in, I'm assuming present day, they have iPhones and electric cards and stuff like that. The lead actress is Cheryl from Riverdale. So I was excited going in. I thought it would at least be pretty decent. And something that my partner and I do is we guess the Rotten Tomatoes rating. And for us, we can pretty much guarantee that if a Rotten Tomatoes rating is below 50%, we're gonna enjoy it. And if it's above 50%, we're probably not going to like it that much. There are, of course, some exceptions to that 50% rule, but that's just generally what we've found, especially with horror movies. And so we were pretty much um, set up for success with the Rotten Tomatoes. We were we were on board, it was below our threshold, and we were anticipating a good movie. We got there and it opens up very typical to the original movie, and that's something that I will say I loved about this. The nods to the original Strangers movie was so great. Every single time something that I would recognize would come on screen, I would get that giddy feeling, and I loved those scenes. But once we moved past the first act, the first, like, hunting phase of the movie where they're, like, showing up in windows and, like, doing creepy stuff, uh, the movie quality quickly devolved. They started making, like, the dumb horror movie main character decisions and a lot of it wasn't making sense and a lot of the action scenes felt like an action movie things blowing up and just it it was it was not the best highly disappointed very very disappointed and i don't think that i am going to watch the next two in the franchise it is going to be a trilogy the strangers movies capture a very specific feeling and I don't think that that feeling translates well with where the story is going. In my opinion, the franchise is going more of like the typical Halloween scream storyline. And while I love them in those franchises, I don't think it works well here. And I don't plan on, certainly not, I'm certainly not spending money on the next two, but I probably won't even watch them for free. Then I actually watched the newest part to the newest season of Bridgerton. It is season three. This is Colin and Penelope's story. For a little backstory, I have read, I have read the first two books in the Bridgerton series. I gave both of them two out of five stars. I am not a fan of Julia Quinn's writing. I don't 
like the repetitive storylines and I don't find the romances to be romantic. I don't, I don't like the development. However, the adaptation is some of the best television I have ever seen. The seasons just get significantly better and better every time. Um, it's certainly one of the best romance shows that I've ever seen and I'm a heavy romance show watcher so I I eat it up. I continue to eat it up. I always watch it as soon as it comes out. And that's no different for this second part of season three. The first arc of um, the first of the third season was Penelope and Colin falling in love. Penelope has been in love with Colin for pretty much her entire life. This is like a friends to lovers uh, storyline. Colin comes back from a vacation and he starts helping Penelope find a suitor and they end up falling in love and then the second arc, the second part, is uh, the resolution of that love story and secrets coming out and different storylines happening within the show with all of the characters. Something that I really really love about this show is not only the shots the costumes, the dec like the decorations, the set pieces, uh, the music, all of that, but it's also very, very endearing. Every single Bridgerton family member has a storyline, some of them more prominent than others, but they always have a through line in every season, and it kind of pulls the family back together, which I think majorly lacks in the Bridgerton books. When I think about historical romance series that follow certain family lines. Um, there's always an element of the family in the story, of the, the family's presence, and that's not how the books go, but the show very much twines everyone together. Everybody has a storyline, everybody has something going on that you're following. You will have storylines that are more prominent than others, but everybody Everybody has their time, which I really like. You don't just have the end of a beloved character's storyline and then you don't ever see them ag again, um, except for <laughs> Daphne. I think it's really, really good. It's some of the best romance television that I've ever seen. It's stunning. A lot of love and effort has gone into the show. You can just tell the production value is insane. And if you have been debating whether to watch it, even if you're not a romance reader, you're not a historical romance reader, whatever, I would still recommend it. If you like romance TV, I think it's really, really good. So, this is kind of an odd one because my partner and I watch reality TV show together, specifically competition shows, specifically cooking competition shows. Um, so, like, MasterChef, Hell's Kitchen. We recently started watching Top Chef, shows like that. But we also discovered a TV show called The Challenge. Now, if you watched MTV in the late 90s, early 2000s, you will remember Real World. Um, this is like a spinoff of Real World, Real World, and it has a lot of the same people that Real World had, except this has like really intense challenges. There is a current season of a, a spin-off show going on right now called All Stars. I think it's either it's either season three or season four, and we're watching that as it comes out. I like All Stars because it's kind of like veteran players coming back and earning the win. It gets you away from typical competitiveness that you have among like 20 year olds it gets you away from like that party and the fights and the like the fact that they're 20 years old and spend 20 hours in the gym every day wins them the competition and this is more about um strategy and it has a little bit more like intellect involved in the challenges and it's more of like being good at weird stuff and having a good social game and it's less about like the biggest guy just automatically wins which I really like and I think the challenge does a good job of balancing reality tv with like challenge competition tv 
The earlier seasons are definitely more about, like, everybody getting drunk and getting into fights, whereas that's not as prevalent in the newer seasons, but it's really fun to find a favorite competitor and watch them throughout the competition. Um, and the final piece after... So, so basically the formula of the show is you have a challenge where you're doing something crazy like jumping off a building or something like that. The loser then gets put in an arena against someone that was voted in by the other players and they have to do um, a 1v1 to determine who wins amongst the two of them and then the loser obviously goes home. And the challenges vary a lot. Some of them are really, really brutal. And depending on who gets paired, it's kind of like an auto win for some people. Um, and then there are others that are more like puzzle related. And in particular, the All-Stars season is a little bit more variety. And it's more of an even playing field, which I really like. And I'm really enjoying this season. We are wrapping it up. I think we have one more episode, but I think this is the most fair season that we've seen so far, um, and I, I'm really liking it. The Challenge is a really, really good reality competition show, and the production value is insane. The challenges that they do are wild. If you are a Survivor fan, uh, this is gonna ruin Survivor for you. We were huge Survivor fans, watched every season, um, and since we started watching the challenge, it's just so different. Granted, you don't have them, like, trying to survive on an island together, but the actual, like, competition, the actual challenges themselves are crazy, and it's just so, so fun to watch. I do also have a favorite competitor, and... She is still in the season. Um, she's going into the final, and I'm not going to reveal that just in case you want to watch, but yeah. All right, and then the last thing that I want to talk about is honestly m the majority of the content that I have been um, consuming lately. I used to be a huge true crime fan. I actually had my own channel centering around true crime, and... At a certain point, it just became a little bit too gross, a little bit too much about the criminal and the crime and less about the person that the crime was committed against. And so I really haven't done much as far as following along with anything. However, <laughs> my boss watches Court TV, which streams live court cases, and she started watching the Karen Reed case. I am not on social media. I don't have TikTok. I don't have anything like that. I have come, I have since realized that this case is a huge case. So you may have heard about it. I obviously hadn't heard about it. And I generally wouldn't be interested in something like this. But I have become very, very interested in the resolution of this case. And I have been watching Emily D. Baker, who is a lawyer. Law fascinates me. I talk often to my stepmom about law. She's a lawyer. And so I started watching Emily D. Baker, her court coverage of the case, and it quickly spiraled into watching all of her videos. A lot of it is like breaking down the law and what stuff means, going through decisions on court cases and breaking it down. And it's super helpful for people who don't really understand the law. And she also covers more like pop culture cases as well. Um, I don't tend to watch those, but I do when she like does an analysis of like court decisions and she goes through like court documents, I will watch those analysis because they're so interesting. Um, but that's what I have been watching the majority of the time, like her coverage of this case in court and also some like one-off videos here and there. Okay, so that's it as far as what I have been watching recently. Let's do a quick rundown of the things that I have been reading. I cover this a little bit more on my channel than I do with like the sh things that I'm watching. I'll mention them in passing, but I tend not to like 
give my full opinion. So for the books, I'm going to just quickly give like a little one-liner of how I felt about it. And if you're interested in full in-depth thoughts, check out my vlogs throughout the month. So first up, we have The Woman and Me. This is Britney Spears' memoir. I don't rate nonfiction, and I definitely don't rate memoirs. I don't like to give a value to someone's life experience and what they decide to share with the public. I am happy that I read this memoir. We got a lot of insight into Britney's life that we don't really know. A lot of her childhood and what it was like to live with her mother and father and how we got to where we are now. This was not my favorite memoir that I've read. It feels very disjointed and I can tell that this was written very soon after the conservatorship was lifted and so a lot of the traumas and things are still not processed and I would be interested to see her journey with her mental health if she decides to share it after a couple of years in therapy um, just to see how she ultimately ends up dealing with everything because this felt a little bit distant which I applaud anybody who shares their life in such a personal way, um, but it just doesn't make for my favorite reading experience. I also recently started the Giant Days graphic novel series. I have talked ad nauseum about these in my videos, so I'm not going to get too in-depth, but this is a super fun graphic novel series following three women in university, and it's just following their hijinks and their shenanigans and their relationships and their romances and them questioning and all of that fun stuff and it's a delight to read. It's super cozy and fun and wholesome, and it's not anything like big and emotional, but it's a good little escape. I read Curse of the Thorn King recently. This is a fantasy romance. It's a Beauty and the Beast retelling. At the time of reading, I really loved it. The writing is gorgeous, but after kind of sitting back and thinking about it, I realized that a lot of time is spent on the descriptions of the castle and the setting um, and how everybody looks and all of that and not a lot was spent with the world and the magic and figuring out how everything works. This is a series so we might dive more into that later on with some more like pivotal characters that I'm sure we're going to get into but as a standalone book this did not work well to establish characters. Um, their backstory or the magic system, but the writing is stunning. This author really understands how to set up a fantasy world. I have read her other series, or one of them, um, and that was very similar there as well. The writing around the castle and the, like, staples in a Beauty and Beast story were really, really strong. I also read Do Your Worst. This is a super fun contemporary romance with a hint of magic. It's about a woman who is a curse breaker and she is employed by someone trying to renovate an old castle in Scotland um, and she has to work with a guy who is an archaeologist who is also employed by that same company to find out if there's any artifacts in the area or in the building or anything like that. And they have a sort of enemies to lovers situation. They don't, they have a meet cute in a bar where they kiss and all of that, but then they don't really get off on the right foot. He thinks she's sort of a scammer and they are um, further incensed by this curse that's on the castle. It's tons of fun and it's fast paced. The author's writing around banter and character work is really, really good and I would love to read more. And that's it as far as notable mentions of what I've read so far in June. I am currently reading a couple of things. I'm currently reading House of Sky and Breath, the second book in the Crescent City series. I am reading One Dark Wind window um, and I'm also still reading The Long Way to a Small Angry Planet. I'm enjoying all three of them. I'm taking them slowly 
um, varying, uh, varying ranges of slow, um, but I am, I'm enjoying them. Let's talk about what I plan to read and watch. This is probably going to take me into July. It is June 19th. So let's talk about what I currently have going on. So we'll start with my Kindle Unlimited TBR. This is probably what I'm going to be focusing on for the duration of the next couple of months. Um, I am currently reading the Shepherd One Dark Window series, so I probably will continue that whenever I finish One Dark Window, depending on how I end up feeling. Then have a couple of contemporary romances that I'm not super in the mood for, but the fantasy romances that I'm interested in are Lord of Gold and Glory. This is the second book in that Lizette Marshall series that I mentioned. I cannot remember a single thing about the first one, so I probably will have to read the ending again at some point. I also have City of Mirth and Malice, which is the second book in the Bane and Blood series. It's like a Peaky Blinders inspired fantasy that I really liked. Um, and then I have Till Death. I don't know much about this. And I also have Heartless Hunter, which I don't know much about. But those are probably going to be the four things that I read really, really soon. I will very likely mood read more than read the things that I already have. So we'll actually see what I end up reading. So now let's talk about the things that I want to watch. So I'm going to go ahead and screen record so that we can go through my Netflix watch list. I am really, really feeling getting back into some K-dramas because I know that they tend to be romances and that's what I prefer to watch. I am currently watching the Pretty, Pretty Little Liars series um, and I don't know how many more episodes that has but I'm watching that as well and really enjoying it. So these are the K-dramas that I have on my list. If you see one that you really enjoyed that you think I should prioritize, definitely let me know. So we have My Demon, The Atypical Family, King the Land, which I have started previously. I got maybe 20 minutes into the first episode and wasn't the biggest fan, but I it, sometimes it takes me a little bit to get into um, to a show. We have Destined with You, Queen of Tears, Dexter is on here, but I don't plan on watching that anytime soon, Crash Landing on You, Alchemy of Souls, which I'm very, very interested in, Forecasting Love and Weather, Hidden Love, See You in My 19th Life, The King's Affection, It's Okay to Not Be Okay, which again, I'm very excited about, 2521, Romance is a Bonus Book, which I feel like I have started as well, Our Beloved Summer, Love Between Fairy and Devil. If you have watched any of these and you think that I should prioritize, definitely let me know. If there's some on other platforms that I should check out, let me know. So that's it for this video. I really hope you guys enjoyed. Definitely let me know down below if you guys enjoy this style of video of just like me talking about things that I've read and watched. It's very different than a vlog, um, but I was feeling it, you know? So let me know if you guys like it down below. Don't forget to subscribe if you would like to see more from me. I tend to focus on cozy vlogs where I primarily read, do little hobbies, and talk about my mental health. My socials are linked down below. Thank you so much for watching and I will catch you guys in my next one. Mm -hmm.